Today is new camera day. The day is upon us, the Canon R6 Mark II. This is the camera, in the flesh. Well, in my flesh. On my flesh? R6 Mark II, the body's a bit different, the layout's a bit different. I took it to Iceland, I've had it for a few weeks, we're gonna talk about it. Okay, first things first, what am I noticing about the new body? They've got a toggle on the top left now to switch from camera to video. The R5 doesn't even have that. You have to hit mode and then hit info and then it brings up the screen menu. Then you choose if you want video or photo. Now an easy switch on the top left, you want video, you want photo. I wish all of the cameras had that, specifically the R5. The on off button is also different for the Mark II. You've got to switch over on the right side. Other than that though, I'm not noticing anything significantly different. And if you use an R6, you'll have spotted them right away. Flip LCD, 2022, I expect every camera to have that. I wouldn't even call that a feature at this point. That's just to be expected. R6 Mark I, 20 megapixels. The update, 24.2 megapixels. The .2, I'm not really, I don't know if that matters. I'm sure there's a Canon engineer screaming somewhere like, it matters. This does high speed continuous shooting of 12 frames per second on the mechanical shutter. But if you're gonna do the electronic shutter, the silent shutter, up to 40 frames per second. If you're shooting events, if you're doing weddings, bride and groom coming down the aisle, that's where you want your electronic electronic just to get all the all the everything shooting sports 40 frames per second very very useful the first version has the same 12 frames per second on the mechanical shutter but when it comes to electronic it's got 20 this is double the speed of electronic frames per second so that is great it's getting to the point where you just like there's no excuse you're not gonna miss the shot you're getting all the subject detection in this model original one i think just had faces now you're getting the whole gamut new subjects being added the aircraft trains horses come on iceland of course, you literally can't go wrong. So that also includes the original like, animals, vehicles, people, uh, making that autofocus motor track and, and identify things uh, way more so than the first version did. This is a similar autofocus system to the R3. Now it's a different sensor, so it's obviously different and it's not as good as the R3, but very, very good because it is utilizing some pro features from the R3s. All right, the big one, 6K oversampled. And for the lay people, that basically means 6K, 6K resolution squeezed into 4K. So you're gonna get a better quality 4K. Now looking through some footage that I did shoot in Iceland and we'll throw some up on the screen here. What I noticed is it just it just looked like a little sharper, maybe a little more defined around the edges. Uh, nothing that I feel was like, oh my goodness, like, game changing, but I, I mean, I'll take a little bit of sharpness and a little bit of more clarity over not having it. Hopefully this footage that you're seeing here is kind of an example of, of what that looks like. If you can't see it, blame YouTube. 4K60 is a great feature. It's a very popular, great frame rate plus resolution to be shooting at. So glad to see it here. This does shoot 180 frames per second, but that's at 1080p. I wouldn't let the fact that something's 1080 deter you from using it sparingly, sprinkled into a 4K timeline when it's exported. I don't think you'd notice a massive resolution drop. You might see it. We might see it. Normal people, muggles, if you will, I don't think you're gonna get a huge, huge shock if you drop a few clips of 1080 in. Okay, here's a big one. This should have been done ages ago but this no longer has a 30 minute record limit. Thank God. I know it's been done before. For Canon shooters, that's good news. Shooting events, setting up the second angle to capture the wedding, whatever. Maybe you're doing a podcast. You don't wanna have to keep running back, stopping every 30 minutes. You wanna put a huge card in, you wanna hit record, you wanna send it. You wanna know that that's recording until you're done recording, the end. 
Nice that it's here now. So that 30 minutes is now maximized up to six hours. I don't know what you'd roll for six hours straight. I'm sure there's someone out there who's gonna do it, but I have no need for that. But I like to know that it's there. Canon, thank you. Update that across all your cameras. Sincerely, the world. 6K raw, but, I know, but you need an external recorder to be able to use 6K RAW and shoot a 6K RAW. You're not gonna turn this on, fire a lens on, select 6K RAW and party. You need the recorder. That's pretty common. You're gonna see that uh, across the industry. This is why these things exist. But it is nice to know that if you have this camera and you want to shoot RAW, you do have the ability to do it. In body image stabilization, I didn't notice as much warping with this at all in comparison to the R5. Massive benefit right there. Now I was shooting pretty cropped in a lot of the time I was using this. So that does make a difference when you're shooting as wide as possible versus way further in. Even on the R5, your wobble is gonna go away if you're shooting at 24 beyond. So who's this for? This is the content creator that is looking to go from an RP or an R and choose the Mark II because you're gonna be getting a lot more pro features in this body. Now, I don't think this is for the professional that's already shooting on the R5 or the R3. Maybe as a backup camera to st stash in your bag if you're doing events and you wanna have that backup body. This is for the creator online that wants to do more videos, have more functionality, have more options, not break the bank entirely because this is coming in at $24.99, um, which is awesome. I remember back in the day buying like the original 5D Mark II. If you could even find one, I had to go downtown to this one place. I had to know a friend who had spent tens of thousands of dollars at this one camera shop. He's a professional wedding photographer. I interned with him for a bit or a bit him to let me and he took me to a camera store and he used his Canon Pro service discount so I could buy the 5D Mark II. They got one in. It was this whole big ordeal. They made sure to let me know that this never happens. That camera was was probably like six thousand dollars plus like it was everything I owned. I had to pay all of my money to get that camera and there was there was no features on that like there is now. That was the original 5D. That wasn't even the Mark II when video was introduced to the camera. That was the original 5D. That was a monumental milestone for me to be able to buy a 5D. What was that? Around a de over a decade ago, but like now you've got this destroys it. It's so it's laughable. The point I'm trying to make is if you're making a living with your camera, you got to weigh how much work you're doing, what you're charging versus what the tools cost. If this can pay itself back in one job or half a job or even just a few jobs, and you're doing multiple a month, then I think yeah, that's a good investment. If it's something that will probably never pay itself back and you're just a hobbyist, I don't think this is probably the camera for you. Those features aren't things that you're really gonna take advantage of. There are cheaper cameras to get and then you can invest in lenses and that I would say is a, is a better plan. But for someone that's taking it seriously or beginning to take it seriously and you want to step up, I think this is a great choice. And I think that's why Canon made it. That's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed to see some of the footage that we captured with it in Iceland. I'm sending this back to Canon now. They made sure to include the return label. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button if you like this video. Smash it if that's something that you're into. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to see more videos like the new lens Canon just released, I'll link that below. That's coming up next. Thank you for being here. We'll see you in the next one.